What's the word, y'all? Yesterday was another insane day in the association from fights to big old comebacks to Zion taking over the fourth quarter. We're going to talk about all of that, but I do want to start here. This is from LeBron uh, from Tim Reynolds reporting after their loss to the Miami Heat last night. I'm a winner and I want to win playing basketball at this level just to be playing basketball is not in my DNA anymore. In that same post game, he said, I don't want to finish my career playing at this level from a team aspect. I want to still be able to compete for championships because I know what I can bring to any ball club with the right pieces. LeBron James has always been a super calculated guy in a post-game interview or any interview in general. This is not turning into a LeBron wants out because even if he did want out, the Lakers can't trade him because he signed an extension. But it's obvious that LeBron is frustrated going into his year 38 and of his life still playing at a, at a crazy level one of the best players of basketball and it doesn't matter because the Lakers are three and a half games out of the play-in Anthony Davis is injured to what extent we don't really know and they're just out there running out lineups of whatever we don't know how long Bron has at playing at this caliber we always say he'll be able to do it forever because he's a he's a computer who spends a million dollars on his body every single season but eventually father time is going to catch up and a realization i came to a little while ago and i may have mentioned this in the video before is that we might see the last years of lebron james's elite level play go on and it be for nothing because the Lakers haven't been able to build a really competent roster since the championship in 2020. And I know it's bad because we're watching all the games throughout Discord. That's what we do as a friend group. And we're watching Lakers versus Miami. And my boy Mike, who's a big Lakers fan, he was like, whatever, Bron, just go out there and beat Kareem's record as fast as you can. Just go score a bunch of points. And obviously, LeBron James is going to beat Kareem. And it's going to happen this season. But like the objective shouldn't change. But the roster is bad. And what happened? How does Rob Palenka slash the Bus family figure it out? Because I'm a believer that 20 set trading 27 and 29, based on what the market is right now, you're probably not getting things back to make the Lakers a contender now. So what the hell do you do? And the only thing I can think of, the only way I can see Rob Palenka and the Bus family convincing LeBron to sign an extension during the offseason, it's promising him that they were going to trade the 2027 pick and the 2029 pick to do whatever it is to win another championship. It is apparent that he loves playing for the Lakers. It is apparent that he loves the city of LA, but but this is not normal for Bron. Because Bron is a dude, whether he loves playing with your team or dislikes playing with your team, whatever, he's a dude that's going to sign a one-year extension, a one plus one, to keep the pressure on the front office. Because if you sign LeBron James to a four-year contract, and he's arguably the greatest player to ever pick up a basketball, you can see yourself getting complacent because we know he's on our roster. Well, Bron was like, nah, we're not going to allow that to happen. I'm going to sign a one plus one. So you must continue to improve your roster around me so we can continue to be in championship contentions. And he, he didn't do that this time. It's a little bit confusing. Um, I don't know how they figure it out, but I just thought it was interesting at the top of the show to talk a little bit about Braun because he normally doesn't stay say stuff like this in the midst of a season. Pelicans versus Timberwolves was, was a great game, man. To see Zion Williams to completely take over a fourth quarter was insane. And, and if you read the mouths of things after they got that last stop, to win the game he went back to his bench and he say actually let me get the let me get the exact quote because i tweeted it because i was read i was reading them lips y'all i do this i effing do this that's that's from z who's always just a normally nice guy but he was in that moment you know what i'm saying taking over the game um and you know what i want to say though even though we know rudy gobert got bammed on um by zion in this one, i thought his defense was okay but even chris finch called him out after the game and i wonder what that's gonna do for rudy gobert basically saying that rudy has been timid as a shot blocker this season because he's trying to make up for so much of the other stuff and they want to see him become more of a shot blocker, which is what we know he can be. Uh, somebody tweeted at me, hey, Walker Kessler is averaging more blocks per game than Rudy Gobert in like 15 less minutes. So I, the, the Timberwolves were in this game for the entirety of it, had the lead at one point, um, and they had the lead going into the fourth quarter, if I'm not mistaken, and Z decided to completely take over. Shout out to Z. The Bulls beat the Milwaukee Bucks. It was a, a, without Chris Middleton, without Drew Holiday, but who cares? We don't have a good track record against the Milwaukee Bucks for the last five seasons or so. So every win we can get, we'll take. Um, and it was just a great game. I always feel like DeMar DeRozan's play is going to go down in the fourth quarter eventually, but it seems like every single game he continues to take over fourth quarters. In the last eight games, we won three m m like miraculous ones. We got the game winner versus the Knicks. We have the Ayo DeSumo put back game winner versus the Atlanta Hawks. And in this one with DeMar DeRozan took over a steal that led to Ayo DeSumo dunk. Vucevic hit a big time three down the stretch. So this is a good win for the Chicago Bulls. And guess what, Bulls fans? We're in the play-in right now, baby. So they're not going to sell. Because as long as you're in the play-in, you got a chance, right? 
right? The Bucks have now lost four in a row and no longer hold the two seed. That is going to the Brooklyn Nets, who end up beating the Atlanta Hawks. No Trey Young in this one, but it don't matter. Win is a win. That man, Kyrie Irving, had some of the greatest, like, tough shot making I've seen. And Aloha, he always been like this. But in that fourth quarter specifically, that boy Kyrie was on a whole nother level. And I love the games where, like, KD gonna get his. He ended up with 26. 16 rebounds from KD was crazy. And, but eight assists where he knows somebody else is cooking or he knows the people around him are cooking. And he kind of just be chilling. You know what I'm saying? Kyrie Irving hit the ball for the last couple possessions. Kevin was, was cool. You know, there was a possession, though, late in this one where they trapped Kevin Durant in that death corner right by the, the half court. And they had to call a timeout. And Kevin Durant was livid at Utah. You to come to the come to the ball, and I like to see that pass from Kevin Durant. The the Brooklyn Nets are now currently on a ten game win streak, if I'm not mistaken, the longest streak that we've seen in basketball as far as win streak goes of the season. And after starting off the year really really rough and a lot of stuff happening off the court too, ten game win streak, two seed in the Eastern Conference. We gonna make another video about the Brooklyn Nets eventually as they continue to win because their next couple games, if I'm not mistaken. I won't say layups because nothing is a layup in basketball except a literal layup. But you get what I'm saying. Nothing is easy in basketball. The best team in basketball could lose to the worst team in basketball. But if I'm not mistaken, the next couple games are considered easier games. So they might hit a 13, 14 game win streak. Who knows? Clocked Mo Wagner in the back of the head and his body went limp. And I was not watching this game. Um, I, I watched the first quarter because it was the first game on. But after that, once the other games start coming on, you know what I'm saying? It's Magic versus Pistons. I'm going I'm to use my time in a different way. Um, so I missed the fight live, and, and bro came, um, Pierre came to Discord, like, y'all see what Killian Hayes did? I'm like, no, what'd he do? He slumped Mo Wagner. Slumped? Like, no, 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 we using that word the right way? Yes, he did that. And then we had a full conversation of what we believe the suspension could be for him, and the answer is, I don't, I don't even know. It's definitely going to be a suspension. You don't punch some a de defenseless dude in the back of the head and make his body go limp without getting a suspension. One of the things about this, though, that, that I realized, though, is, of course, this happened in Detroit. Um, and as this was happening, over the PA announcers, was they were like, everybody stay in your seat. If you leave your seat, you will be escorted out. Detroit don't take no chances when it comes to the fans' interaction with the NBA players no more. They've seen it happen. They will not let it happen again. So I guess in the next couple days, we'll see what happens with Killian Hayes. Um, but obviously, you got to control your temper. I know that Mo pushed them or wh whatever, but you got to control that. DeMontis Sabonis has a fractured hand or thumb or whatever, and that didn't stop him from, <laughs> from going out there and putting together a stat line of... 31 points, 10 rebounds, 5 assists in a close game against the Denver Nuggets. It came down to a free throw. You got to hit him, right? You got to hit him. And Malik Monk, who at one point was like leading the league in free throw percentage, missed the first one. I'm like, oh, snap. It's a, it ain't about to be good. But he hit the second one, and then they get the stop or whatever. Um, they light, light the beam, ladies and gentlemen. Light the beam. The Warriors are back to a 500 team. It's so crazy the difference in it's night and day between home and away. I didn't get to watch this one live, but I did see a lot of Warriors fans praising Ty Jerome for his play recently. And more importantly, Patrick Baldwin Jr. Hmm. Got a nice little jump shot, did a little bit of everything. Something we should be on the lookout for. Um, and I think that's where we're gonna wrap. I'm sorry, Sons of Wizards. I watched a little uh, zero seconds, not even a highlight. It could have it could have had the biggest dunk of all time. I have no idea. I do see that Ri Hachimura had 30 points off the bench. Whoa. Leave a like, subscribe if you want to. Link is in the description to the newsletter. Go ahead, hit that up. Drop it three times a week. You get some NBA news and stuff like that. It's always really fun. So shout out to the Enjoy Basketball newsletter, and I'll see y'all tomorrow.